Hi everyone, here it's Marcello De Vitis from Scotland. I am very happy I had the opportunity to record my presentation as I wasn't able to personally attend the conference. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the conference. I'm going to talk about the role of networks connecting native seed stakeholders and improving success in ecological restoration. I guess during this symposium, as well as during the World Conference, you may have heard about many interesting researches and projects, and we might all agree on the fact that it was possible to carry out all of them, or at least most of them, through collaboration with different experts and stakeholders. In fact, ecological restoration requires multi-stakeholder dialogue and collaboration, and today, there are a few restoration projects that would not engage with local stakeholders. To briefly remind the meaning of collaboration, it occurs when several participants in a situation are independent, in that the movement of any one of them toward the goal they all seek increases chances the others will also reach it. Also, collaboration is defined as sharing for mutual gain or benefit. In fact, Sharing for mutual benefit and improving success in seed-based restoration is what the two networks I'm going to describe aim to do. The first network is NASTEC, the Native Seed Science, Technology and Conservation Initial Training Network, funded by the European Union, which consists in a partnership of seven partners in four European countries, with the aim of improving the large-scale production of native seed for grassland restoration in Europe. This network has two main objectives, to train a new generation of seed specialists in seed science, conservation, technology, production and policy, and to connect European native seed stakeholders, especially academia and industry, and facilitate the knowledge, the knowledge transfer to improve native seed supply in terms of quantity, quality and the species pool. Let's have an overview about these key issues. It is well known that native seed quantity nowadays it is not sufficient to satisfy the demand for ecological restoration both at European and global scale. What is limiting the production scaling up? Quality represents an important constraint since seed batches of poor quality lead to unsuccessful restoration. A recent study by Marine and collaborators showed that in Europe in some cases it is possible to buy a seed lot with 0% viable seeds. Native seed quality is the result of both seed origin and seed processing. While the first component, seed origin, depends on the maternal environmental conditions and other intrinsic characteristics of the source population, the second component, seed processing, depends on when and how seeds are collected by users and how they are treated between collection and use. Are seeds handled with following guidelines? Finally, another recent study by Laduser and collaborators analyzed the restoration species pool, that is the pool of species of restoration interest available from commercial or institutional seed suppliers which may act as a filter in species selection for restoration projects. The authors found that over a set of 1,122 species of restoration interest for European temperate grasslands only 32% are covered by both commercial production and gen germination knowledge. Species for which there is a lack of germination data are also less likely to be commercially available and more likely to be omitted from the restoration species pool. The authors concluded saying that improving knowledge sharing between sectors may support the expansion of the res restoration species pool. So, what is the current degree of knowledge transfer between academia and industry? All these issues indicate the urgent need for research and development on European grassland native seed biology, including knowledge transfer to support the commercial sector. Within the NASTEC project, we worked on characterizing the native seed production sector and the community of native seed users, as this, this characterization is needed as four step to better design customized communication and knowledge transfer strategies. 
We first conducted a web-based search and compiled a list of European native seed stakeholders, resulting in more than 1,300 contacts in 31 countries, and then we circulated a survey to these contacts to understand the challenges, needs, opinions and impacts of this community. We structured the survey in three main sections, market, tools and collaboration, and now I'm going to share with you some results from this survey. We filtered the respondents who participated to the survey in order to consider only users of native seed of herbaceous plants, which were 148 from 16 countries. These respondents were mostly from the public sector, followed by the private and NGO sectors, and belonged to 16 different professional fields. The most represented being research, followed by native seed production, restoration practice, seed analysis, consultant, consultancy, and so on. We asked what's the most expensive activity related to native seeds, dividing the responses between the overall community of users, excluding the seed producers, and then the category of seed producers alone. For the overall community, the top four answers were seed collection from native populations, research, site management before restoration, and purchase. For seed producers, the top four were site management before seed multiplication, seed harvest, harvesting from crops, and seed collection from native populations together with seed purchase. This means Labor activities are the most expensive, especially for producers. In particular, native seed collection from donor populations may act as a potential economic constraint, as also shown by Tucker and collaborators in the report for the European Commission published in 2013, and where a focus on technology development would yield significant economic benefits. We asked to seed producers who the major customers of native seeds are, and the top three answers were landscape contractors, individuals, and governmental bodies. When we asked an opinion about the trend of the native seed demand in the last 10 years, we again took out the single category of native seed producers from the overall community, and we compared the responses as producers may have a more reliable idea of this trend. As we can see from the graph, the responses were very similar in both groups, with the majority reporting an increase in the demand. Then, when we asked to all participants if they were in favor of seed zones delineation and if seed zones should cross country boundaries, in both cases the majority was positive. Regarding the use of external guidelines for native seed collection, cleaning, storage and testing, the respondents were almost equally divided. 55% uses them, while 45% doesn't. Respondents who said yes were asked to provide the name of these guidelines, and from the responses we can see that, even if the European Native Seed Conservation Network and the International Seed Testing Association guidelines were the most popular, there is some preference for national guidelines, or at least guidelines written in the national language. This information is important, as may indicate the need of translating guidelines in many languages as possible. Respondents who, say, who replied yes were also asked if they adopt these guidelines to be relevant to their native seeds and 65% answered yes. Regarding collaboration, we asked all the participants, excluding researchers, if they have an active collaboration with the research institute. The majority of respondents said yes. We then asked to respondents who answered no if they would like to have such a collaboration and the majority answered positively. Finally, we asked producers if they would join a trade association and the majority answered about joining both a European and a national association 
followed by the choice for the national level. And when we asked to all participants if they would join an online international network to share and exchange knowledge and experiences, 83% of respondents was positive. This brings me to the second network of my presentation, the International Network for Seed-Based Restoration, as it is actually an international network for knowledge transfer on seed-based restoration and satisfies these needs of the community. NASTEC and INSR share many objectives, first of all the facilitation of knowledge exchange for better results in seed-based restoration. In fact, INSR was created with support of some NASTEC members and there has always been high synergy between these two networks. NASTEC will be concluding in March 2018, but in some way will continue through INSR in fostering collaboration and connecting native seed stakeholders. Similar activities are carried out by these two networks to facilitate knowledge transfer, such as the publication of electronic newsletters where news, events and useful links are shared, organization of international workshops and symposia where experts on seed-based restoration are invited, like this symposium, to present their work and to discuss opportunities and challenges of the native seed community. I guess you already had a comprehensive introduction about INSR, so a few more details about the, our website. It is meant to be a knowledge hub to share the current best practice in seed science, conservation and, and use in restoration. Specifically, we publish news to share studies, facilities and projects on seed-based restoration. And please contact one of us if you would like to share your experience in the website. We have a section for events and webinars and a new section for opportunities. The Native Seed Library is the place in the website where we store useful materials such as guidelines, protocols, presentations from conferences and links, paying attention to publish reliable materials for the use of Native Seed stakeholders. We also set up a discussion forum about seed-based restoration in the website of SER. You can find it accessing the Communities menu on SER website, then Community Forums. So feel free to access the forum and contribute into our discussions. Before the end of my presentation, I would like to remind that in a month's time, between the 25th and the 29th of September, NASTEC will run an international conference on seed quality of native species, ecology, production and policy at the Royal Botanic Gardens Q. This will be an important event for the European native seed community since for the first time experts from different categories such as researchers, restoration practitioners and especially native seed producers will gather together from all over Europe and will exchange their experiences. So thank you very much for attending this symposium and this presentation. If you want to get in touch for any information, feel free to contact me. And remember to keep on connecting, sharing and collaborating for better results in seed-based restoration.